Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Today we're looking at the Mug Slicer Kit by Bifaco. It's one of those amazingly versatile modules, combining the functions of a step sequencer, a clock source, a clock divider, a burst generator, a bi-directional analog switch, and more. Most parameters are voltage controllable. There are sliders for each step which serve as attenuators for the analog switch functions. And a play loop stop switch with external input, as well as CV control over step address and an end of cycle output. I've had it a while now and it always ends up being useful, no matter what the patch may be. In the baggie, you get everything you need, including a printed build guide, a nice black panel, some cool stickers, and a single red PCB. You also get all of the hardware and electronic components needed to complete the build. Building is straightforward but time consuming due to the sheer amount of panel components. As usual, I started with the lowest profile components first, placing the resistors, diodes and ferrite beads in their places before soldering them all from above, then turning the board around to trim the leads and touch up my work. Next, I placed the IC sockets. Using the panel to hold them in place, I turned the board around to solder. I normally solder just the corner pins first, to make sure the sockets won't slip off before I solder all the rest. Then I snap the ICs into their respective sockets. Make sure all the ICs are correctly oriented before moving on. Next came the film and ceramic capacitors. These are not polarized. Just plug them in, turn their legs outward so they won't fall off, turn the board around, solder and trim. When trimming, make sure you don't cut any solder, only the metal legs right where the solder ends. Now install the crystal for the microcontroller. Next, place and solder the transistors and voltage regulators, making sure they line up with the drawing on the silk screen. Next come the electrolytic capacitors. These are polarized. Make sure to orient them correctly. Now the little blue switch that sets the range of the address CV to either 0 to 5 or 0 to 10 volts. Next come the male headers. Then the power header. All headers go on the same side as the electronic components. Now on to the hardware. Turn the board around and start snapping on the potentiometers, switches, jacks, sliders and LEDs, but don't solder any of them yet. Now carefully place the panel, lightly moving the components around so they'll fit through their respective holes. Be careful that nothing falls off the board or you have to start again. Once everything is fitted to the panel, fasten the components in place with the included nuts. Now turn the module around, make sure the LEDs are correctly oriented, and wiggle them until they go through their holes on the panel, then solder them. Now solder all of the remaining panel components. Turn the module back around, snap on the knobs and fader caps, and you're done. Quickly check the power header for shorts with the continuity mode in your meter, just to make sure. That's it. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit like, subscribe, click on the bell, and maybe join us on Patreon. That's it. Stay noisy, and see you soon.